this week's video, both Chef Na is gonna take you to her kitchen. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna talk about three boat meals. The first one is epic simple boat dinner for special occasions. The second one is one pot black bean soup with coconut milk. And the third one is boaty egg fried rice. One disclaimer for the videos, you won't see any measurements in the recipe because I always just freestyle. I cook play by ear. But I would leave a link of the uh, recipes that inspired me for this few dish. If you need a measurement, you can go follow them. Okay, let's start now. Now let's get into the kitchen. But first of all, you have to have some sort of hygiene pre preventions. Because <laughs> the last delicious thing is to find hairs in the food. So the meal will be the special occasion meal that you can prepare to impress anyone that you want it. And it's very simple, very quick. It can be last minute. We have three different dish. For starters, we have caviar with bellinis. And the caviar is a little bit more expensive than Christmas, but it's still very cheap. It's $2.49 for this little jar. The main dish is spring chicken. <laughs> uh, you will see, you already saw how it's, it looks like. But it's very, very simple with just different colors the nature offers. And for dessert is the walnut pie and you buy the pie sheet from the supermarket which is already ready so it's very very quick and simple. So my process would be starting with the pie with the dessert first. So in that case you can multi-use the oven while you cook the pie and later on you uh, get ready with the blah, 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 chicken so you can multi-use the oven. One tip I have for boat cooking is pack away the stuff that you've used. Because of the uh, small kitchen space, if you pack away the stuff that you've used, then you will have more working space. Not very professional. And you can decorate your pie however you like. You can de decorate it with like traditional stripe, cross, and that's just really easy. You just cut it into lines. And then you can also decorate it like uh, a bow tie. So you cut it, you cut these into a little square and then just squeeze them together. Ta -da! They look like little bow tie. And then you just put them on. <laughs> Ta-da! Okay, so they're ready for the oven. So we have a gas oven with the dials from one to eight, but it never worked. So we have to always kind of check it. It got three layers. We've only got one rack. So I'm just gonna put this in first. Another boat cooking tip. Make sure everything has at least two use, such as Tupperware boxes they should have they should be able to use in the oven so they can be storage and they can also use as a, a cooking tray for the oven so yeah these you can keep them and use uh, for breakfast or something make a little tart <laughs> that's what I do I never waste food
we have some leftover onions so you can just cut it, sprinkle it all around I mean, don't be too serious about your cooking it can be a bit messy or something can be a bit broken because after everything's cooked only the taste matters <laughs> it all comes together to form a big old poop <laughs> for seasoning I highly recommend this Kajun? Kajun? Cajun. Cajun chicken mix. It's the best and it fits all sorts of occasions. So you just do this. And I think it's ready to go. We check how the dessert is doing. Ah, see, it's puffing up. So what I'll do is I'll just transfer it down here and put the chicken in Ta -da! all right maybe for 30 minutes 25 minutes and now it's time for the starter so everyone can enjoy the starter while the food is cooking one tip for bellini cooking if you don't have a microwave the best way is to roll them up in foil paper and then put it into the oven for three minutes or until it's warm watch out your hands while you take the bellini out you can also take the chicken out for a sprinkle of cheese uh, you can use shredded mozzarella or gouda or whatever cheese you like and pop the chicken back when you prepare the bellini sour cream oof de lump lump fish caviar While the chicken is cooking, boil some water, get the chicken juice from the oven, and make some couscous. The key thing with the chicken juice is it gives the couscous so much of a better flavor than just plain hot water. And it goes really well with the chicken meal. You have to cover up the couscous. So my way is to use this to cover it up so this doesn't get cold. <laughs> wow, double usage and full effect. I think it's ready. All right, chicken is ready. A little bit burned. And uh, let's have a look at the dessert. Almost done. Can leave it for a tiny little bit more. Well, we present the chicken. After serving on a plate, garnish it with some black pepper. I've got some dry coriander. If you have some fresh parsley, then you can use them. And now I believe the dessert is also ready. Yep. And then just let it let it cool down while you enjoy your meal. And voila. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> this meal is a one pot meal, very 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 suitable for both. The reason is because on your voyage, you might not have a lot of fresh vegetables. So how do you keep your nutrition needs fulfilled? This is black bean. <laughs> May I introduce this high protein packed and fiber uh, packed 
Uh, food. food. <laughs> <laughs> this, you can keep it forever, for two years, five years. Ooh. Even seven years. Yeah. <laughs> And the coconut milk, which is really, really healthy and nutritious too, which you can keep in a can, in a little cotton jar. So let's get started. We have some good uh, luxury of fresh veggies, so I'm going to use them. And the main thing is soaking your bean. You soak your bean the night before or three hours before your cooking. And that's the result. One thing for instant pot stuff is the seasonings. Use as much as seasoning you can. Mainly uh, cumin tastes really good, paprika really good, any type of pepper, and uh, chili powder if you're a chili fan, uh, ginger. I soak the bean in the instant pot because it seals up so that even overnight if it rocks uh, or whatever it won't spill but for cooking we need a, a fresh pot to cook to fry the onion and garlic first to give the taste One other thing that I do with uh, vegetables is that I cut them into different shape. For example, sometimes I would dice some onion and I would just chop, have some big pieces. So it kind of gives you a delusion of having many different type of vegetable, but actually they're only just one type. I think it's, it's good, but I don't know. <laughs> Now it's time to pour a little bit of juice. Ooh, that got quiet. Yeah, so you don't burn the food. It's good while you cook it and you need to do something. Just pour a little bit of water in it. <laughs> no wasting. Vegetable stock or chicken stock, beef stock are always really tasty. Good for making a pot, like making soup. Now pour the bang in. And now, pour in the coconut milk. I would, I would say it's the most important part. Yeah. Oh, it's so solid. Solid. Is it always this solid? No, usually it's um, liquid, but I, I think it's because of the cold. Mm. But it's okay. Close the light with the whistle on. And then we just wait until the whistle blows. And taking up my advice on packing away the 
the stuff that you have used. Then you have a more clear space to use. Okay. And now we're gonna cook the rice. Fishing out my pot. <laughs> Measurement. That's One, mine. Three. A lot more for Mark. And then for tonight, we will also use these. So we'll just make a bit more. I'm gonna use the bean juice to cook the rice. The extra bean juice. To measure how much water you use for cooking rice is to put your finger, your index finger, on top of the rice, not on top of the water, on top of the, on top of the surface of the rice, and then the water is supposed to be about the middle, around the half of your index first section. Mm, yeah. So we could have a little bit more. Maybe it's just one thing. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and uh, you cook until it boils. Turn it all the way down to the lowest fire. And wait until the water is fully gone. Then your, your rice is ready. And try not to open a lid because it cooks with the uh, steam. Usually when I cook rice, I also do kind of meal plan. So for uh, lunch and if I'm using rice for dinner, I'll cook it all together. Especially for fried rice, which is coming up next. It's better to use old rice than fresh cooked rice. Nice hole in your pants, <laughs> you little savage. <laughs> so the rice is ready and we will serve the rice. <laughs> it looks very organic. <laughs> Always make sure the gas, the pressure inside is all off so that it's safe. And one thing which is really important is some lemon juice. Ready for serve. And you, this one bowl of food, you can enjoy it while you're out there on the passage or Lying down here on the sofa. Sorry, oh. I've been silly. <laughs> Alright, there you go. Well, thank you Enjoy. very much. Cheers. I do like this. I think, like, no offense, it doesn't look like the most delicious thing. Yeah, yeah. But it tastes very nice. Mm. Especially on these cold winter days, it's perfect. Yeah, very hearty. Very hearty. Now we're going to this daily staple meal, which is the first ever meal I learned how to cook when I was young. Uh, it's called egg fried rice. <laughs> and the first time when I made it, I put too much salt and nobody could eat the whole big pot of <laughs> egg fried rice. Okay, so what we have now is overnight cooked rice and three egg for two person and this is a bad substitute for spring onion if you can get spring onion definitely use spring onion if you can't you can use some leek they're in the same family so i think they should be fine it's so cozy the rain outside <laughs> i love it all right now it's the egg <laughs> They're running away from me. 
salt your egg a little bit, not too much. So for professional Chinese cooking, I think the more oil you use, the more delicious the food is. But I usually don't like to use too much oil. Now putting the rice in. At this stage, you might want to turn the fire down a little bit to medium. Putting some soy sauce. Not too much. Here is a cool trick to plate your food a bit more fancier. <laughs> it usually works on a smaller bowl, but this is what I have now. Okay, you press it down in a bowl and then put the plate over and then switch over. Ta -da. If your bowl is smaller and tighter, it will look nicer. But uh, I'm giving mm. you everything I have now, people. So, <laughs> like the video if you enjoyed it, and if you're gonna, uh, and let me know when you try it out. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And thank you very much for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs>